Hi there, my Ego Pico friends! Today, let's have a look at how to use symbols in Affinity Designer version 2 in your illustrations and surface pattern designs. A symbol is an intelligent object that you can use multiple times in your design. Editing any one of these symbols on the canvas will automatically and instantly update all copies of that symbol, otherwise referred to as instances. A symbol can be edited with all instances of that symbol even across multiple artboards. You can also choose to edit a symbol without changing the others. And what can symbols be used for? Symbols are suitable for repeating elements of design that are likely to change, such as consistent branding like logos, social media templates, flyers, but also buttons, illustrations, and they can come handy even when creating your surface pattern designs. If you don't have the symbols panel visible, go to window, tick symbol and you should get this window open. After a bit of theory, let's take a look at how symbols actually work. Since I focus on illustrations and surface pattern designs on my channel, I want to show you how to use symbols in practice when creating pattern designs. I find symbols useful when making patterns, especially if you want to create multiple colorways or if you need to change the existing colors for any reason. Before adding any element onto the canvas, I recommend converting it into a symbol right away, so you don't forget this step. You can do this by selecting the elements and clicking create. Once you've created a symbol, you can either drag it from the symbols panel onto the artboard, or you can copy and paste a symbol that is already present on the canvas. A layer that is symbol will be labeled symbol and marked with an orange line. Now I'm going to start placing elements onto the canvas. The layout is done, it's not perfect, but I believe it's enough for the demonstration. Let's say I'm not happy with the colors. Since I converted my elements into symbols, I can experiment with different colors without having to change each one individually. I can make this tiger, for example, pink. I can make this one reddish orange. And this one I can make yellowish. And you can see that the colors changed automatically. If I want to combine these four layers into just one, I can do it super easily because I'm working with symbols and so the changes are visible in all its copies. I can also make adjustments in the adjustment panel. I'm going to try to add outer shadow with 100% opacity. And it makes the tiger stand out against the background a little bit more. When symbols are synchronized, any changes you make will update all copies of that symbol. If synchronization is turned off, Changes will only apply to the current object and won't affect the other copies. This will stay that way until you turn synchronization back on. In this illustration, you'll see how the sync option works. When sync is enabled, any changes made to a master symbol will affect all copies of that symbol. So for example, if I change the color of this leaf, the other leaves will change color as well. However, if I disable the sync option, I can make changes to only certain copies of the symbol. So for example, I can adjust petals of certain flowers so that they don't look exactly the same. When I turn the sync option back on, I can then change the color of the stroke of all the copies at once.
Now let's talk about rotating and resizing. If you select the entire symbol, any changes will affect only the specific copy and not the rest of the copies. However, if you open the symbol, you can rotate or resize all the copies at once. This is one of my older illustrations where I used a different workflow. Now that I work a bit differently, I thought it would be a great opportunity to show some additional changes you can make using symbols. First, I would take out all the pixel layers. I would group them, rasterize them to get the single pixel layer. Then I would group the petal layers. I would create a copy. On this layer, I'll remove the fill color. I'm going to ungroup this layer. Make them into one layer by clicking on Add. I'm going to remove the stroke color. And I'm going to insert the pixel layer into the petal layer. Finally, I would adjust the stroke by adding additional nodes where I want the stroke to start and end. And then I would remove the unwanted parts by holding Ctrl and clicking on them. The last option for symbols is Detach. Detaching a symbol turns it into a regular object that you can edit independently and it no longer automatically updates when changes are made to the original symbol. This can be useful, for example, when you want to create multiple color rays for your illustrations or patterns. Once you finish with one color palette, create a copy of the entire artboard. On the original artboard, select all the symbols and click on Detach. You'll know that the symbols were converted back into a standard object if there are no orange lines next to them. Now you'll be able to work with a different color on the second artboard without affecting the original artboard. Another great thing that you can do with symbols is that you can save them as assets and use them in any new document. To do this, open the Assets panel and drag the symbol into the assets. Now, whenever you open a new document, you can drag the symbol into the canvas. and any changes will affect all the copies of that symbol. And that's it! This is how you can use symbols in Affinity Designer version 2. I really appreciate it when you share your ideas for new videos in the comments as, you know, it saves me time in coming up with new content and ensures that I create content that you are interested in. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Ciao!